Hey guys, it's Matt from RC Overload. What's up? Welcome back. Uh, we are moving on with the Sakura D4 build, as you guys can see. I know in the last video I had some struggles. <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, what can you do? Sometimes you just run into little difficulties and you gotta, you gotta take a few moments and figure it out. And it's not always easy to do so when you're on camera. Um, so, I, yes, I did make some mistakes. I did make a few... Uh, I did have some issues when installing this. However, it really wasn't as complicated as I originally thought. So, I fixed it. It's pretty much all set ready to go now. I did finish installing the other side, the rest of the screws on this bulkhead. Um, or this case, the plastic, whatever you want to call it. Um, and as you guys can see, I've kind of already jumped ahead a little bit. Now I'm going to explain this, as you guys can see, yes we do have the upper carbon fiber brace, looks sweet in there, um, but I want to explain this part real quick here. In the instructions, it actually tells you to go ahead and install the front and rear shock towers before installing this upper deck. However, after playing around with it for after the last video, I discovered that it was easier to install the upper deck first before installing the shock towers. Why is that? Well, if you guys look under here, we have a bearing pulley setup going on down here. If I put the shock towers in here, I would not be able to have any movement from this front differential to be able to put this pulley on. It would make the tension from this belt a bit difficult uh, to get around putting this pulley on and screwing it in. So by leaving the shock tower off of here, I'm able to lift up the differential out of the bulkhead here, loosen up the tension of the belt, and be able to put the belt, the belt around it and tighten the pulley bearing first, and then slide the differential back in. So I wanted to explain that. Is That is what I did. I found it was a bit easier to do that uh, before going ahead and putting these shock towers on. So... With that being said, hopefully today <laughs> will go a little bit smoother. I've already laid everything out. It's pretty self-explanatory on how to install the front shock towers. But uh, with the rest of this build, I'll show you guys exactly step-by-step -step on how to do that. Now, we have these little ball ends, which uh, most likely, because I haven't really looked ahead in the book, I haven't really done it, I'm going step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step here. Uh, I believe these are going to be for your uh, your toe links, your your turnbuckles, and so forth. Okay, but they require you to put two of them in into the shock tower housing. So we're going to get those started a little bit, if we can here. Uh, we're going to take our screwdriver because they do have the Allen holes on the top. I believe this is the right size. No, that's not the right size. There we go. And we're just going to screw them in. Kind of like so. Let's see if we can get this one started. Okay, you don't want to start. Do, do, do. I'll show you guys what I'm doing here. Okay. Putting the two ball ones in. Now we gotta do that to the other side here, real quick. Okay. So, these are your rears, okay? These are your rears, I believe, right? Yeah, let me double check the book before I... No, these are your fronts. I deeply apologize, you guys. So much going on here. These are your fronts, these are your rears. You can clearly see the difference. The rear has a brace here, while the front does not. It just has the two bumps for the screw holes. Okay. See the difference? Hopefully you guys can. Okay. Not only that, but the rears also ha only have one. And where the front has two for the ball holders. See the screw holes? Yeah, okay. All right, now we gotta put in our brace. Take a screw. These are easy enough. Voila. Okay. 
Okay. Ta-da! And that's that. So now we got to install the shock tower. Now you do have your steel ball ends, aluminum ball ends, that are going to be for your shocks that are going to get mounted up to the shock tower. Now, as you guys can see, I do have the upgraded aluminum shock towers, and they do have a thousand and one different positions that you can put it in. So, according to this, they pretty much tell you to use the bottom row in the middle. Uh, so we're going to use the third hole in from the bottom here. Okay? You guys can see it. Third hole in from the bottom. And put our little screw in. Now the front uses a longer than the rear. Okay. Just tighten that down. Okay. Do the same thing on this side. Voila! Now we just need to mount it up. So as you guys can see. Okay. And then you have your four screws that will just get mounted right up into your holes in here. Okay, time out. I know, I'm sorry, you guys were all into watching me put the shock tower on. However, just when things started to go a little bit smoothly here on the build, I ran into a big issue with the Sakura D4. Now, I think I found a way to solve it, which you guys will see here once I'm done talking. Um, but before you guys go ahead and start assembling this next section of the Sakura D4 with the shock towers and the upper brace and the tensioner, watch the ending, all right? Because there's something that's just not right here on the Sakura D4, and I'm not the only one to experience this problem. I'll give you guys a little hint. It has to deal with the tensioner, all right? Now, I know I said to put it on first before putting on the two shock towers, which is still okay once you finish watching the rest of this video. You'll understand what I'm talking about and the little problem that I took about 45 minutes to figure out and realize. Now, this one part I forgot I even had. Thankfully, I had it and I kind of thankfully forgot that I had it. Uh, to run into this problem so that actually this may help you guys out. So, we're going to get back to the ending of the video here. I know I didn't film the rest of the car being put together in this section of the video, um, but I promise, because the car is actually already built, uh, that the rest of it does go 100% smoothly and uh, that this is pretty much the last of the problems that we run into on this build. So. Watch the ending of it. You guys will understand exactly what I am talking about. And uh, just for your reference, because I don't show it, the front shock tower mounts up, or is it the rear shock tower? No, because we put the front shock tower on um, in the video. The rear shock tower mounts up exactly the same as the front shock tower. So there was really no need for me to film that anyways. Uh, so I did have to take some time to figure out this small problem or big problem, however you guys want to see it, and uh, get it straightened out. But hopefully this will give you guys a, a little bit of a tip uh, when installing the all-wheel drive kit. This only involves the all-wheel drive kit. And like I said, I'm not the only one to run into this problem. Reed from Urban RCLA also ran into this problem. He actually messaged me saying that, hey, you know, did you experience this? Because I don't know what to do really. So Reed, hopefully this helps you out. Um, this is the only fix I've found so far. So, all right, let's get back to the video. Woo! All righty, so more complications. Um, <clears throat> it seems like this little bugger definitely just wants to make me work hard on this. So, as you guys saw, uh, I was going to install the tensioner here up front. You guys can see the aluminum version the tensioner is underneath well before I put the aluminum one in I totally forgot that I actually had the aluminum and it's kind of a good thing that I did because I experienced something here uh, that I think will actually be very helpful for all of you guys when you're installing the all-wheel drive kit 
The one thing that I am noticing, uh, which I mean, again, I am not used to belt driven, so I'm not 100% sure if this is, you know, supposed to be like this or not. I'll do a little research and I'll let you guys know on the next video. Um, but the belt seems extremely tight. It is very tight. However, I mean, everything moves, nothing breaks, but the belt is very tight. Now, I do know that they will loosen up over time as things wear in, and this is, all the parts are still new. So it's probably just a matter of it's all new. However, when I was going to install this plastic version of the tensioner, because the belt is so tight with everything pulling on it, it actually caused, if you guys can see here, where the, because the pulley goes in right here, it actually was bending this plastic down, causing the belt to continuously fall off uh, every time I went to go and hand spin it like this. So, if you guys get the Sakura D4 all-wheel drive, I would actually highly recommend for your first aluminum upgrade, before you do anything else, get the aluminum tensioner. That way, everything is secure. There's no bending. There's no flexing. Uh, the belt, if you guys can see, I mean, I know it's kind of hard, but everything is straight on that belt going through there before the belt kept shifting off, falling down, um, and everything just kind of holds holds nicely in there. There's no problems whatsoever. Other than the fact it's just really tight, which I think it's just a matter of time and running it before things start to loosen up and break in. So, it's actually a good thing that I forgot I had the aluminum tensioner and that I ran into this problem so you guys who may experience this might actually find that uh, find this a little bit useful to get the aluminum one right away. So, I gotta say, it's a simple car, but yet it is causing me so many damn problems. <laughs> but we're gonna stay positive and we're just gonna keep going like I keep saying. So, um, that's that. As you guys can see, the entire drivetrain system is in, the shock towers are in, the control arms are in, uh, and she is looking beautiful. She really is. Hopefully, from this point on, we've tackled all the difficult or challenging things. Uh, I believe the next steps are we're actually going to be installing the, um, the knuckles and the drive shafts and whatnot into this. So, uh, I'll do a little research on all that. And uh, see you guys on the next video. Again, sorry guys, it's not perfect. I am not perfect. I am still learning. And uh, we just... You know, everybody's going to run into problems. I don't care what you guys say. We're all going to run into problems and whatnot. So, anyways, thanks for watching, you guys. And I will see you on the next RC Overload with some more Sakura D4 stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.